The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said in, to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, we are now in the season called Advent. And if we think about the word Advent, it means a coming. For all of you who know any French, to come is venir, V-E-N-I-R. Advent is related to that word venir, a coming. Well, who are we waiting for? We're waiting for Jesus. Well, Jesus, didn't he come 2,000 years ago? Well, yes. But he comes to us each and every day, but he also will come to us at the end of the world. And so we're preparing ourselves, we're getting ourselves ready. Just like the people of Israel 2,000 years ago, were getting themselves ready for the coming of the Messiah. They didn't know it was Jesus. They were getting themselves ready. We also need to get ourselves ready to welcome Jesus into our lives, to welcome in him into our hearts so that he will have a proper place to, to come. Now, when we think about 2,000 years ago and the people of, of Israel who were waiting for the coming of the Messiah, they thought that they were ready. They thought that they were prepared for the coming of the Messiah, who now we know is Jesus. They thought that they were ready, but we can see from their actions that they weren't really ready. They weren't ready to receive him because they wanted God to do things their way. They weren't ready to do things God's way. So one of the things that we need to think about, and, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a very, very good example for us. We need to believe. We need to believe in what God is doing. When we heard this account of the angel Gabriel coming to Mary, first of all, the greeting of the angel, and we have this all the time, every time we pray the Hail Mary, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. But the angel uses that full of grace like it's her name. He doesn't say Hail Mary, full of grace. He says, Hail, full of grace. And it tells us the tremendous gift that God had already given to Mary by allowing her or preparing her heart to be able to receive Jesus. And then he gives her this tremendous um, opportunity. He asks her if, he, if she would be willing to be the mother of the Messiah, the mother of the Savior. And Mary only has one question, and the question sounds like she's doubting, but it's not. All Mary wants to know is, what does God want me to do? She believes in what God has done. She believes in the promises that God gave to the people of Israel in past generations. 
and she believes that God can do what the angel is, is saying at this time. She's just saying, what does God want me to do? What does God want me to do? And that's a good question that we all should ask. God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do so that I can go to heaven? And when the angel tells her that God is going to perform a, a miracle in her that has never been done before, it's never been done. God performed all sorts of miracles by, for example, having older couples have children when they weren't able to have children anymore. God had done things like that. But God had never done the kind of miracle that the angel was promising to Mary. But what does Mary say? Does she say, well, I don't really know that God can do that? No. She said, I am the handmaid of the Lord let what you said be done to me. So Mary believes, even though this is an unprecedented miracle that the angel is talking about, Mary believes it. And so when we look at this first reflection of Advent, we want to remember that we're waiting for that coming of Jesus. We're waiting for his coming into our life today. We're waiting for his coming at the end of time. But we want to prepare ourselves. And just like Mary, we want to prepare ourselves by believing believing in what God has said, believing in the promises of God. Because there are times when it seems like the promises of God really can't happen. But those who believed in God, God always comes through. God always comes through with his promises. God is always faithful. And so we can see from the past the way that God has done this, and it helps us to trust that everything that God has promised us, that God will do, but we need to believe, we need to trust, just like Mary did. So we ask Mary in a very special way today to help us to trust in God, to trust in God's promises, and with Mary that we can say, behold the handmaid of the Lord, God, what you have said, let that be done in me. Let that be done in my life.